This is it, Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's the ultimate fun adventure. The mystical tree of life stands tall here in this miraculous kingdom. Some say it is the key to the wisdom of the great circle of life. Hi, I'm Journey Jack. I've traveled the world tracking jaguars in the jungle and alpaca in the alpine. But I've never seen anything quite like Disney's Animal Kingdom. So hang on to your canteens. This is going to be a wild adventure. We'll begin our journey here on Discovery Island, the heart of Disney's Animal Kingdom. Can you guess what gives a pink flamingo its color? It eats a seafood diet high in beta-carotene, the same nutrient we get from eating carrots. Yummy! Do you know why flamingos stand on one leg? Because if they lifted the other one, they'd fall down. <laughs> yes, fall down. Okay, we're moving. I can't believe it. It's a giant Galapagos tortoise. The oldest living Galapagos tortoise on record was 152 years old. Shh. Oh, excuse me, sir. Surprise! Wow. Ah, it's gotcha. Mickey. Uh huh. Well, oh. Discovery Island sure has oh, some surprises. You said it, Journey Jack. There's a lot to do here. So, uh, what's next on your map? Oh, what's not next? Check this out. Oh, it's okay. It's Dino-rama, huh? Dog, huh? And, then, and then there's going to be some really cool thrills in Asia oh, over here. Gosh. And then, oh, a, a trip to Rafiki's Planet Watch. How cool, huh? What else? And, and, oh, of course, who could forget Kilimanjaro Safari. Oh, not see me, some pal. Really cool oh. animals, huh? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, oh, and then, of course, your parade, Mickey. Oh, my parade? Gosh, that's some adventure. Well, uh, have fun, Jack, and I'll see you around, okay? okay? Happy trails! Same to you! Everyone needs an oasis, and we have one right here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's the hyacinth macaw, the largest parrot in the world. Can you believe this bird can crack through a Brazil nut with that bill? Ooh, and don't forget the rhinoceros iguana. You know the great thing about all the different areas here are there are signs that actually describe the birds and animals. For example, right here, this is the cygni Signet, sinus, mallet. It's a swan. It's a swan. Oh, oh hi. You know, evolution is a wonderful thing. 
I think I'll dig up some history of the gigantic creatures that lived over 65 million years ago. This land was established by a paleontologist and scientists who worked to unearth its rich history of fossils. It has since been open to students and the public so all may learn from the bones found here. You know, the story goes that in 1947, a fossil hunter discovered dinosaur bones right here in this very spot. This became a place of study on the subject of, guess what, the dinosaurs, of course. Uh-huh. This here is the woolly mammoth. Say, Jack, yeah. do you know why the woolly mammoth had a trunk? No. Why? Because it would look pretty silly carrying a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mickey, you just tickled my funny bones. <laughs> yeah. High five. Yeah. All right. And keep Gee. digging. I think you found something. We've discovered the largest, most complete T-Rex ever found. Dinosaur is 13 feet tall, and her skeleton is 90% complete. Now, the Tyrannosaurus rex was nicknamed the land shark because its recurved teeth allowed it to lock onto its prey. <laughs> Wouldn't get too close. Oh, hey, not, not so close. Back off. <laughs> what do you call it when two dinosaurs run into each other? A Tyrannosaurus wreck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wreck. <laughs> hey, everybody. We're about to enter Chester and Hester's Dinorama, a wacky and wonderful fun fair. Hmm. I wonder how it got its name. Things over here and put some of your macrame up there. Oh, honey, I love your audience. Oh, honey, they're here. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Chester Diggs. Hi, people. <laughs> We have built this wacky roadside carnival full of Cretaceous fun. We're Dino Maniacs. Dino Maniacs. Now don't let him fool you. He is the mastermind behind uh, all that you see uh, here at Chester and Hester's Dino Rama. He's the cream in my coffee. That's true. The ketchup in my cottage cheese. In the squeeze box. The mystery meat in my curry dog. We don't know what it is. Chester Diggs, I love you. Oh, I love you too. There is so much to do here at Chester and Hester's oh, Dino Rama. We've opened up kinds of things. We got a brand new roller coaster called Primeval Hurl. Oh, it's, and what's it's World, what? primeval world. Don't primeval tell me. World. <laughs> Scientists have sent us on a prehistoric, I mean prehistoric time warp. Watch out for those flying asteroids. Triceratops means three-horned face. Now, this dinosaur ate plants and was similar to the rhinoceros. You know, some scientists believe that a fiery asteroid hit the Earth, making dinosaurs extinct. Well, we're off to the Cretaceous period. Ow! 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 Shh! We're in search of an Iguanodon dinosaur. Now, the Iguanodon was the second dinosaur ever named. Did you ever wish you could really go back to prehistoric times and see a dinosaur? Let's go save an iguanodon from extinction. It's a dino rescue. Carnivorous bull. That means it eats flesh. Come on, you can hide with me. Seriously, come on.
We've come to the mystical lands of Asia. Adventure awaits. Namaste! The Anandapur people welcome us to Asia. We'll check out the jungle trek, the Maharaja jungle trek. The Royal Hunting Lodge of Anandapur has been overtaken by wondrous wildlife and vegetation. Let's take a look. Okay, now look here. There are several species of fruit bats. These largely nocturnal creatures feed on fruit, pollen, or nectar. Do you know how to tell the difference between two tigers? Just take a look at its stripes. Each tiger has its very own pattern. Over the years, man has overhunted these beautiful animals for their fur. Okay, quick question. What's the largest cat in the entire world? You guessed it, the tiger. You really earned your stripes. I gotta go. They're looking at me like I'm a Journey Jack Sam. The black and white coloring of the Malayan taper helps it hide in the moonlight. Have you ever seen a taper at night? See, it works. The Komodo dragon has 52 razor sharp teeth it uses to attack its small prey. This is the world's largest and most powerful lizard. Wow, look at that. It's Disney's Expedition Everest. They say the Yeti lurks in those mountains. Let's go. Mickey in the jungle! Hey, Mickey! Oh, hiya, Journey Jack! Neat binoculars. So, have you spotted any leopards yet? <laughs> nope, and I'm not lying, but I'll be on the lookout. Alrighty, let's do a quick double check. Got my blanket, got my radio, got my nocturnal binoculars. Where's my toy, Mickey? Where is my toy, Mickey? Okay, there he is right here. Alright, I'm set to take on the Cali River Rapids. Wish me luck. It's very, very misty here as we make our ascent into the Kali River Rapids. The jungle beat, the excitement and the enthusiastic possibilities that lead to what's ahead. Okay, here we go. Here comes our first one. There's a big water guy just straight ahead. Here it is. Here it comes. It's huge. <laughs> they don't call it the rainforest for nothing. There's a lot of smoke. This is not a good thing. This is where loggers have come and are destroying our natural environment. All the logs here are being burned. Is that good? Whoa! See? It's all bad. It's all bad. I'm not happy with this area. You see that fire? <laughs> that was 
is awesome. I got soaked. Alright, time to get a bird's eye view on my map. Oh yeah, here we are. This is Flights of Wonder. It's amazing what these birds can do. Just gonna get my camera. Hey, bring that back. Bring my map back. What a showcase for the natural abilities of these wonderful winged creatures. You know, these birds are a true treasure to our planet. It's Camp Mini Mickey. What a great place to vacation. It's like I'm in a cabin retreat. And we've got the best hosts ever. In fact, there they are. Hey, hey, Mickey, Minnie, woo! It's me, Journey Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, say, uh, make yourself at home, okay, pal? <laughs> Oh, hi again, Journey Jack. Hi, Mickey. Hey, hey, it looks like you're trailing animals. Shh, I sure am. Any luck finding any tracks? Uh-huh, and they're fresh. What do you think it is, huh? A mouse. Uh, yeah, right, Jack. Come on, uh, let's check it out, huh? A mouse. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey. Oh. Yeah, I, I think it just tracked yourself. Myself? Oh, ah, oh, gee. I guess I did, huh? You know, a highlight to our visit to Camp Mini Mickey is the excitement at the Festival of the Lion King. Let's go. This Disney classic comes to life in a jubilee of colors, energy, and music. Come on, clap along. Hey, look, it's Simba, and there's Timon. Pumba! Hey guys! It's a tribal celebration like I've never seen. Feel the majesty of the great circle of life. All aboard the Wildlife Express. We're on the right track to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Cool, see you guys. Here in Disney's Animal Kingdom, we've explored jungles and rainforests. Now these are called ecosystems. They are the plants and animals that make up a community along with a habitat in which they live. Now all these ecosystems together make up a biosphere, which we call Planet Earth. Hey, look, it's Rafiki. Hi, Rafiki. Wow. You know, Rafiki's Planet Watch reminds us to open our eyes to the world around us. It's incredibly fascinating to study the habits and habitats of animals. Well, well welcome, folks. My name is Paul, and out here at Animal Kingdom, I get to work with all the really cool critters. We work with reptiles and amphibians. Do you like that stuff? All right, now this here is called an Indian rock python that what you're looking at here is half grown. Wow, huh? Right now she is 12 feet long and just a weeny little 80 pounds. We have seen these getting up to and over 250 pounds. And there have been some out there that have measured over 25 feet long.
Oh boy, take a look through this window. We can see the veterinarians hard at work. Let's check it out. Wow, that's a gorilla there in the treatment center. Oh, it looks like he's got a splinter. Hey, let's watch as the staff here carefully removes the splinter from its foot. At Conservation Station, we get an up-close look at the care and treatment of the animals. Now the gorilla will be back in his own habitat in no time. Ah, civilization, a chance to discover the quaint African village of Arambe. Harambe is a Swahili word for come together. The people here are so friendly. Jumbo! Jumbo means hello in Swahili. Wow, there's so much to do here in the bustling town of Harambe. You can blend in with the villagers Harambe style. You just need a little bit of paint. Wow, cool. I'm a tiger. Hey, take a look at the baobab tree behind me. You know it only has leaves three months out of the year? Otherwise, it looks like this. Wow, that was a cool jump. It's like he has a furry parachute. Wow, look up ahead. It's a troop of gorillas. Now see the big one there? As the largest and strongest male of the troop, he's the leader. The fur on his back is turning to a silvery gray color as he gets older. That's why we call him a silverback. Hey, we're in the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. It's the Kilimanjaro Safari, my favorite kind of wild ride. Here we go. Oh, awesome. It's the hippopotamus. Now the hippo is known as the river horse, and for good reason. They're great swimmers. Crocodiles! Oh, wow! Did you know some crocs eat rocks? Biologists often find stones in the stomachs of crocodiles. Now that's what I call a heavy meal. A giraffe can grow to be 19 feet tall, which makes it the tallest mammal on Earth. Giraffes sleep standing up, so they can be ready to run from a predator. Oh, 
Because of their size, the adult elephant has only one real predator, the human. People have hunted elephants for their tusks made of ivory. Don't look now, but it's the king of the jungle, the lion. A lion's tan-colored fur helps it hide in the grasslands where it lives. Only the male lion have manes. I don't know what's ahead, but I did hear gunfire. So everyone be very careful as we come across the next bridge. I see tusks of elephants here in a campground. It is. I see poachers. Poachers are here on the safari. He is coming with us. Don't you worry, I'll be back. That was an exhilarating expedition. So much to see. Wow. All right, this is it, what I've been waiting for. It's Mickey's Jam and Jungle Parade, a popular custom here in Harambe. And you know what? I'm riding in front with Rafiki. <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> You know, we truly are all connected in this tree of life. Here on this planet, we have a place along with the Earth's plants and animals. It's the circle of life. Disney's Animal Kingdom was fun beyond my wildest dreams. Goodbye, Journey Jack. We'll see you on your next adventure. Thanks, Mickey. You take care of yourself. So long, everybody. Namaste! The Anander people... I'm sorry? We'll begin our discovery here on Discovery Island. The heart... We'll begin our discovery... We'll begin our... What do I say? What do I... Discovery here on Discovery Island. <laughs> we'll begin our discovery here. Okay. We'll begin our discovery here on Journey... Cut. We'll begin our journey on Discovery Island. Okay. I... Namaste. Namaste. Let's try that again. Namaste. All right. Does anybody know where the Triceratops ride is? Anybody? 
Rolling. Oh, there's prickers. Ow! I get you with my guys. Hi, 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 everybody. You know what? Why don't we go over and ride a Triceratops spin? Then you can see how much fun that is. It's just like Dumbo, only it's better because it's with dinosaurs. Come on. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Hmm. Woo. Namaste. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Jack. You know, Mickle. Mickle. <laughs> Mickle. <laughs> I just called him Mickle. Okay, okay, let's do another one. <laughs> Is that right? Namaste. Na. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. Okay. Namaste, namaste, namaste. We're off to the Cretaceous period. Oh, God, God. Ow! Excuse me, pardon me. My cable. <laughs> A Tyrannosaurus rack. <laughs> Thank you for playing. See, they thought it was fun. You guys thought they didn't get it. They're walking away. Okay, but it's, it's, it's okay. You must stay. You must stay. Namaste. Okay. Woo! We're gonna save an iguanodon! Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you! You can get it in the merchandise store next week, that's right. Can you believe this bird can crack through a Brazil nut with that bill? It must really work out with that bill. Yeah. Macaw! Ma Macaw! Is Namaste. 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 And what, what is Namaste? And of course, the Disney hand is a pedal. Never a point. All right, ready? I'm ready. Oh, okay, yeah. Meow. 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 Did you see what he just did with his mouth? Seriously, he just looked at me like this. Nice. Oh, now he's licking himself. Okay, are we rolling? Okay. Yeah. Jumbo! Jumbo means large female elephant. Oh, that's Jumbo. Jumbo. Ah, civilization. A chance to discover the quaint African <laughs> village of Orambe. Who said they'd be crying any louder? <laughs> <laughs>
For 70 years, the relationship between Disney and animals has been undeniable. From countless cartoon characters, entertaining animatronics, and Oscar-winning True Life adventures, Disney and animals are virtually one and the same. Walt may have summed it up best when he said, I only hope we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. Today, that mouse is roaring. Disney's Animal Kingdom is the result of hundreds of talented designers, engineers, storytellers, and animal experts. The story of how Disney's Animal Kingdom came to be is a tale of Disney magic all its own. It all started in 1990 when Michael Eisner and a group of talented Disney Imagineers began brainstorming the idea for a theme park devoted to animals. A traditional zoo was not what the designers had in mind. Seeing animals in cages was not the experience Disney was after. The driving philosophies were entertainment, adventure, and conservation awareness. The designers began by packing up and heading off to Africa surrounding themselves with exactly what they wanted to reproduce. They really do wiggle their ears every time they come up out of the water. They discussed the look the feel, and the story they would create for Disney's Animal Kingdom. How perfectly round that is, like a cup. Almost a whitewash. That's um, what it is. You know, thing? Yeah. Each Imagineer kept a personal diary. Many of their stories and experiences found their way into the Kilimanjaro Safari's attraction. In addition to the facilities that would house Disney's newest living attractions, animal experts were busy finding ways to group the animals together in safe designated areas where they could live naturally. In April of 1992, the design team came up with their primary plan for the park layout. Thousands of drawings, models, and pictures were produced. On their first major presentation, Disney executives were truly amazed. With only minor changes, the initial park layout was approved and set. Disney's Animal Kingdom suddenly became real and urgent. First, a place had to be found that would hold all the ideas and stories as well as provide a safe and comfortable home for the animals. 600 acres of land just west of the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida was perfect. It was high, dry, and large stands of native oaks could be saved and worked into the park. In 1993, the final details were in place. Attractions, facades, props, scripts, and layouts were completed. Secondary design teams were winging their way to Africa and Asia for research on buildings and vegetation. As construction started, Disney employed 26,000 construction workers, 60 miles of underground facilities were laid, and 4 million cubic yards of earth were moved to sculpt the park. 500 skilled workers were hired to do nothing but build the rocks required inside the park. Upon entering, guests will walk through the oasis. Unlike traditional merchandise corridors in other Disney theme parks, the guests can unwind, relax, and experience a new environment. At the center of the park, the Tree of Life is a soaring tribute to the interconnectedness of life. Due to its size and weight, the initial design was based on a dome. Connected to a base that utilized offshore oil well technology, the final shape was structurally sound, but for the builders, it presented a huge challenge. 
However, an ingenious design was conceived that allowed four sequentially sized branches to be connected in random patterns. Sculptors from all over the world were brought together to create the base of the Tree of Life. It started as a model that was cut into small cubes. The cubes were digitized into a computer that fabricated the tree stages in eight by eight sections. Once the sections were completed, they were flown to the site by helicopter. This tree can withstand winds up to 74 miles per hour, has over 100,000 streamlined leaves and towers 140 feet into the air. The 100-acre Kilimanjaro Safaris attraction is designed to hold 100 animals in an upland forest with two savannas. design stressed the importance of concealing the barriers between the guests and the animals. At Gorilla Falls, guests will feel there is nothing between them and a troop of gorillas but a grassy slope and bamboo. In Dinoland, the thrill ride, Countdown to Extinction, has the largest audio animatronics ever produced. One of the largest investments in the park was in landscaping. The park called for more than four million plants ranging from huge trees to small shoots of grass. Three primary concepts were incorporated into the landscaping. Guest comfort, park screening, and the right environment for the right attraction. As the front of the house progressed, the back of the house was preparing for the arrival of its living attractions. Thousands of man hours went into the planning of the backstage living areas for the park's animals. Disney planners spent a great deal of time listening to respected animal organizations, conservation groups, and expert curators from zoological parks around the world. From the start, Disney was dedicated to two propositions. The animals would only come from pre-captive populations, and no animal would be acquired if it added to the detriment of the wild population. A personal concern for all the animals was evident as they arrived at their new home. Some of the animals were purchased, others loaned, and some donated. Disney's Animal Kingdom represents a paradigm shift in animal care. Holding areas were designed and budgeted with priority over the attractions. The buildings are climate controlled. Huge skylights provide sunshine and fresh air circulates through the enclosures. Once the animals are in their new homes, a staff of 300 animal care specialists and veterinarians will care for them seven days a week. Here at Disney Animal Kingdom, we feed 1,500 animals. In a day, we go through approximately a ton and a half of food. Of that types of food, we go through produce, grain, hay, and meat products.
The vets arrive before dawn and decide if an individual animal can go on stage. Mammals are usually held in quarantine for 30 days after they're brought into the collection so we can just make sure they're healthy. The health of the animals is the most important aspect of their job. Well, my name is Melinda and I'm one of the animal keepers here in Conservation Station. And with me is a bird called a tawny frog mouth. Today, all of the ideas, planning and construction have come together to make Disney's Animal Kingdom the most unique theme park in the world. More than just a place to see animals in their natural habitat, Disney's Animal Kingdom brings the adventure and thrill of being close to these wonderful partners sharing our planet.
At the center of the park, the Tree of Life is a soaring tribute to the interconnectedness of life. Due to its size and weight, the initial design was based on a dome. Connected to a base that utilized offshore oil well technology, the final shape was structurally sound, but for the builders, it presented a huge challenge. However, an ingenious design was conceived that allowed four sequentially sized branches to be connected in random patterns. Sculptors from all over the world were brought together to create the base of the Tree of Life. It started as a model that was cut into small cubes. The cubes were digitized into a computer that fabricated the tree stages in eight by eight sections. Once the sections were completed, they were flown to the site by helicopter. The finished tree can withstand winds up to 74 miles per hour, has over 100,000 streamlined leaves and towers 140 feet into the air. every time they come up out of the water. Thousands of man hours went into the planning of the backstage living areas for the park's animals. Disney planters spent a great deal of time listening to respected animal organizations, conservation groups, and expert curators from zoological parks around the world. From the start, Disney was dedicated to two propositions. The animals would only come from pre-captive populations and no animal would be acquired if it added to the detriment of the wild population. A personal concern for all the animals was evident as they arrived at their new home. Some of the animals were purchased, others loaned and some donated. Disney's Animal Kingdom represents a paradigm shift in animal care. Holding areas were designed and budgeted with priority over the attractions. The buildings are climate controlled. Huge skylights provide sunshine and fresh air circulates through the enclosures. Once the animals are in their new homes, a staff of 300 animal care specialists and veterinarians will care for them seven days a week. Here at Disney Animal Kingdom, we feed 1,500 animals. In a day, we go through approximately a ton and a half of food. Of that types of food, we go through produce, grain, hay, and meat products. The vets arrive before dawn and decide if an individual animal can go on stage. Mammals are usually held in quarantine for 30 days after they're brought into the collection so we can just make sure they're healthy. The health of the animals is the most important aspect of their job.
Before building Disneyland, Walt Disney was so wild about animals, he wanted to use real lions, gorillas, and hippos on the Jungle Cruise attraction. He used audio animatronics instead, so every guest could see the same show. Michael Eisner wanted to make sure that being so close to wild animals was an exciting idea. Now during a meeting with executives, a 400 pound tiger entered the room and walked around the table. After that, everyone was convinced that being around wild animals was a thrill they couldn't get anywhere else. Now backstage, the holding areas for the animals are specialized for each animal they're designed for. The giraffe barn has hinged doors they can poke their heads through, and the walls in the elephant barn can stand up to 10,000 pounds of elephant pushing force. Now those bumps and twists in the road at Kilimanjaro Safaris are no accident. A seven inch deep cement path complete with ruts and potholes was built and covered with dirt. They even let grass grow between the tire tracks.